Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. This is going to be my in-depth guide how to set up WinLater XR for both your MetaQuest and Pico VR headsets. There's going to be a few resources that I need to resort to along the way here, and everything will be linked in the video description. To speed this video up, I'm going to assume that everyone who has a MetaQuest knows how to sideload into their headsets. I would highly recommend following one of the existing guides to set up SideQuest so you can be able to install WinLater XR from the SideQuest store. For the resources we need, I'm going to need you to download and save some files into the download folder of your headset storage. First one is going to be the AJ prefix setup. This is an EXE we will later run within the WinLater container. The second is for the Pico VR users watching. We're going to need to get the Qualcomm V819.2 driver. Save this to the download folder in your headset. The third is the sample project Bigelow has created to bring WinLater XR into 6 off VR. You can grab that from the link in the video description and save the zip file into the download folder. If you have means to already extract the zip file on your PC, just drag in the folder of the contents onto your headset. Now that you've installed WinLater XR onto your Quest or Pico headsets, click to launch for the first time and be sure to allow the permissions saving your preference. Wait for it to finish installing the system files without interrupting the process. Once the process is finished, click OK to allow the USB storage access and allow the permission. Before we get started within the container setup, quickly close the application and relaunch it. In the MetaQuest, it will be under Unknown Sources. This will prompt a new install contents window which is going to finish the installation process. For the Pico VR users watching, now we're going to install the MetaQuest 3 video driver. Click the hamburger menu on the top left and go down to Arduino GPU drivers. Click the bottom button that says Install Drivers. Click OK. And go to your download folder and find the Qualcomm driver that you've downloaded. This step is not necessary for Quest headsets, as this is already the system driver. Turnip drivers are supported for Pico headsets, but they are not supported on the Quest. If you're going to install turnip drivers, you would also do that from here. Before we get started making the container, if you have any gamepads you wish to use, now is a good time to get them paired. For example, I have a PlayStation 4 controller paired by Bluetooth to my MetaQuest 3. To be able to use this within WinLater, I click the three lines in the top left hand corner, go to Controller Manager, click Assign for Player 1, and click the button on the controller. This will automatically set up all buttons and configuration into WinLater. You don't have to use a gamepad, but if you pair it this way, you can turn on your gamepad at any point while you're playing and be able to use your controller, just as if it was on a console. Covering the settings page really quick, Use OpenXR integration is normally on by default, along with Use Passthrough. Passthrough has a really heavy cost to the performance to your games in WinLater XR, so I personally always leave this off. Using OpenXR integration means that when a container is launched, it goes into an immersive application like a VR game where you can use your motion controls as the mouse and your head as freed off. If you want to use it as a normal Android application amongst multi windows, untick the box that says Open XR integration. Whichever change you make, be sure to always tick the blue tick box to save your changes. We're going to be looking at the container creation process here. As you can see by the screen, I've already created two instances and renamed them accordingly. To create a new container, click the plus icon in the top right hand corner. Creating a container can get very complex, as there's many different options available within WinLater. For the purpose of this video, we're going to focus on a few key changes to suit the Pico and Quest headsets, starting with the Wine version. You have to now make a choice between using x86 Proton ARM64. This cannot be edited later. The main difference between these two is Proton x86 will use Box64, whereas Proton ARM64 will use FEX. While FEX is making huge advancements and offers more performance, the compatibility isn't always there. For this video, I'm going to be sticking with an ARM64 container. Next, we'll get to the graphics driver. I personally set this as Wrapper V2, however Wrapper V2 can have some issues in some titles, which we will need to resort to changing to Wrapper. Clicking the cog icon on the right hand side, it is vital if you're using a Quest headset, you leave the graphics driver version as System. No other drivers can be used. Turnip drivers are not supported on Quest 3, but do work on the Pico headsets. So if you want to install and use extra turnip drivers on Pico headsets, you can do so and select them here. 
As we installed the Qualcomm Arduino A1 9.2 driver earlier, we can now select that for use in the Pico headsets. This is the same version that is used on Quest 3. For Quest 3, you do not need to change anything and you must leave this as system. For both the Quest and the Pico headsets, I recommend turning frame synchronization to never and click OK to save changes. For DX wrapper, I recommend sticking with DX VK. You can change the version within the cog here. By default, it is on 1.10.1. This will work for most games as a non conformant Vulcan driver, but with an ARM container, you can change this to use drivers compatible with the ARM containers, such as my recommended 2.6.2-1 G Plus Sync 1, or the DXVK 10.3 ARM64 EC Async 1. Both of these are excellent drivers for performance and compatibility. For this video, I'm going to be sticking with the 2.6.2-1 G Plus Sync 1. In both instances, I like to enable the Async toggle and click OK. The Direct Draw slash Glide Wrapper is currently set to DD7 to 9. This is because Quest 3 has lost all compatibility with Wine D3D. If you're in a Pico headset, you can change this back to Wine D3D. However, it makes no difference if you are not using older games that require this. For 32-bit emulator, we're going to be changing this to Box64. As this is an ARM container, using FEX Core doesn't have the best results in 32-bit games. Scrolling down further, you can change the GPU name presented to the computer. I like to go with something modest like a GTX 1070 or 1080 Ti. Increasing the video memory size to 4GB. Environment variables will have the DXVK HUD with FPS shown as default. You can remove that here, or you can add more info to be able to view how your games are running. For drives, if you want to use a USB drive, you can click Add, change the letter that you want to assign to the drive, click the folder on the right hand side, go up to the top left hand menu, and select your external drive that is connected to your headset. In this case, I have a Crucial X6 drive. From here, click use this folder and allow the drive permissions. In the advanced tab, the box 64 version can be changed here. However, this is only going to be applicable to 32-bit applications when using the ARM container. I always leave box 64 preset as performance and we're going to change the FAX core version to 2508. TSO mode, I'm going to leave as fast. Fastest, it does give a little bit more performance. However, if you're playing any Unity Mono Bleeding Edge games, it will not be compatible with Fastest. So I recommend just leaving this as fast overall for general compatibility. X87 mode we're going to leave as fast. However, if you encounter any issues installing files within one later, saying a file not found error, you need to change this to slow to be able to do your install. For gaming, you can then change it back to fast. Multi-block, I always leave enabled. This gives a really good performance increase in ARM containers. For the startup selection, we're going to leave this as essential. However, depending on your application, you may need to change this to normal. And finally, in the XR tab, this is where you find the controller bindings for your motion controllers. Currently, this is set to left thumbstick for keyboard left, right, up, and down. Modern games may need you to change this to WASD. Once you're done, be sure to click the blue tick box in the right-hand corner. Now we have a container set up, we're going to launch into the container. Now we are presented with the container's desktop. You can click the right thumbstick to bring up the Winlater XR menu, offering different options such as an on-screen keyboard, shortcut to the task manager, option to use relative mouse for a real mouse connected to the headset by Bluetooth or USB, and also the option to toggle on and off the pass-through. As you can see by the controller moving in space, it moves the cursor within the container. Before we get started jumping into any games, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping here. First, we're going to go to the Start menu, go to System Tools, and Wine Mono Installer. This is vital for being able to launch games correctly. Go into the D drive on the left hand side, will bring up the download folder of your headset. From here, we can find the AJ Prefix Setup EXE we downloaded earlier. Running this installation, I would recommend installing back to the D drive, as you can see in the video here. Click OK. And click OK once that's finished. When it asks you to press any key to continue, click the right thumbstick on your right controller to bring up the on-screen keyboard. 
Click any key here. Close your keyboard and continue to go back to the D drive on your headset. Now you will see a new folder created called AJ Prefix. Go into this folder and run the install only start menu.bat file. And now when you open the start menu, you'll find the new AJ start menu. There are two things that I like to use from this. The AJ Prefix offers many different fixes and many different installations to be able to fix your games. However, the main two we're going to focus on today is installing necessary files.bat. And the other is going to be within the offline components, VC redistribution, and install VC all in one dot bat. Now we are able to start playing games in various different ways. We can also play games on the external drive we set up earlier, selecting the drive letter on the left hand side, and selecting any one of the DRM free stores that we can pull our games from. For example, Amazon DRM free has games that are installed on a laptop that can actually play the games and then transfer the game files onto the external drive or I can go in and find the EXE and launch the game. Now that you know a few different ways to launch your games, we're going to be checking out the six Dofinator sample project. If you have not already extracted the zip folder onto your headset storage, I'm going to be able to show you how to do that in headset now. Go down to your start menu, go to the AJ start menu, go up to the file manager and open 7ZFM. Find the 6 Dofinator sample project zip folder and right click. Go up to 7zip.zs and extract to 6 Dofinator sample project. Once it's been done, we can close the file manager, refresh the page here and we will see the 6 Dofinator sample project folder file. Now we just need to launch the 6 Dofinator exe. The magic here is this is an exe file which would be a normal flat application. But because of the magic happening in 6 Dofinator, we're going to be launched into an XR instance. And that's it, we are now in the 6 Dofinator sample project with full 6 Dof VR. To exit your container, always click the right thumbstick to bring up the WinLater XR menu. From here, you can now exit the container. Depending on the container created and the game being played, there can sometimes be issues with loading screens crashing the game. This is a known issue and there is a very easy fix for this. In something like Painkiller Black, it will not load into the starting of the game unless you bring up WinLater XR menu with the right thumbstick click. Leaving this on screen while it's doing its loading seems to make the game successfully load into its levels. This is applicable for many games I have here, including Doom 2016, Postal 2, Pink Hill Black, and Evil West. Your luck may vary, but this is a nice easy workaround that you can temporarily do until the issue is figured out. If you have installed games within a container, it will now present a new shortcut within WinLater XR, meaning you don't have to launch into the desktop environment and launch a game that way. You can launch straight from the shortcut, being able to edit all of the container settings to suit that game. You can also create shortcuts from any pre-installed games on the headset storage, such as Crisis 64 and Dusk here. Going into the container, I will be able to show you how to create this. Go to the D drive, which is going to be a download folder. Find the game you wish to create a shortcut for. Go to the exe that you want to create a shortcut for, and right click and create shortcut. This is applicable to the container that you are in. So if you wish to experiment with x86 and Proton ARM containers, you can create a shortcut from each, which will be accessible in the main WinLater XR menu to be able to experiment and change settings to see which container can run the game best. There are many different ways to play your games in WinLater XR, using the motion controller as a mouse in a big screen environment like this, clicking the left thumbstick to attach the mouse cursor to your head so you can look around in freed off vision, clicking the right grip trigger and the left thumbstick to enable 3D side by side for supported games, using a Bluetooth gamepad such as the PlayStation 4 controller I have here, using a combination of your motion controller and the keyboard or giving full control to the mouse with relative mouse movement by clicking the right thumbstick and enabling relative mouse. Whichever method you choose, 
be sure to always play without pass-through to boost your in-game FPS. Going from 35 where I am now, clicking the right thumbstick, and going to use pass-through, toggle that off, and we jump up to 60 FPS. There is a huge performance saving to be had not using pass-through. To make Steam work on Winlater XR, we're going to need to make a new container. So use the Wine version as x86.64, leave the screen size as 720p for now. The graphics driver version, we're going to have to leave a system if you are using the Quest. In the Pika 4 Ultra, you would select your Qualcomm Adreno 819.2, turn in the frame synchronization to never on both headsets. For the DX wrapper, we're going to go with 2.4.1 for now. Scrolling down, we're going to go to the Advanced tab. Make sure Box 64 preset is on Performance, and Startup Selection is on Normal. We're going to click the blue tick, creating the container, launch into the container, and we're going to be running a Steam install EXE we've downloaded from our PC and saved to the headset storage. We're going to click Next, Next, Install, and we're not going to run Steam, we're going to untick the box and click Finish. From here, we click the right thumbstick to exit the container. Going back into Winlater XR, going up to the hamburger menu in the top left hand corner, we go to shortcuts, where we will now find a shortcut for Steam that we've just installed. We're going to need to click the three dots on the right hand side, go to settings, scroll down, and in the advanced tab, we're going to go down to the exact arguments and paste in the line that is in the video description. So it's done, click OK. And now we can launch Steam from here. When you are presented with the Steam login screen, I suggest turning on the pass-through and using a mobile application to scan the QR code through your lenses. This does work and it's more secure than typing in your name and password to win later XR. Always be safe with your Steam login details. Once you have signed yourself into Steam and installed any games, I suggest coming back into the shortcut menu in Winlater XR and changing any DX wrapper versions. You can now experiment with different drivers to see which is compatible with your Steam games. Do note that Steam itself takes a lot of resources and performance in games is not going to be as good as if you're running DRM-free games direct from the container. Any game shortcuts that are created from installing Steam games will not work. You always have to launch games from the Steam container that you've created. You cannot install games to external drives, so be wary of your headset storage space before you start installing games from Steam. And that about covers it for this video. I recommend joining the Winlater XR subreddit for guides, tips, and game profiles that you can copy to get the maximum performance out of your Quest 3 and Pico headsets using Winlater XR. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.